Hi, I'm Ryan Renchy. And I'm Sean Fontes. And we're here with our final project, Tic-Tac-Toe Tutor. It's a game with the purpose of entertaining and instructing players how to correctly play and strategically think about Tic-Tac-Toe. We've got two versions, competitive and corrective. Now let's go to the browser and check out our corrective version. We like our UI a lot and hopefully it's intuitive to you. It needs no explaining. Now as you can tell, after every click, the computer color codes each position with possible moves. And it shows you which are the best and which are the worst. And the TAs help you out with either positive Jedi Master, or sometimes not so positive commentary to help you win the game. Now we'll head back to our PowerPoint and talk about our script. Now in this presentation outline, we've gone over some exciting parts about the user interface that we really like. But the magic is truly in the details of the code and the algorithmic complexity. I'll hand it over to Sean after that to speak about our new custom blocks and why we think our project is so cool. Here's a representation of our new user interface. We have customized feedback after every move. For example, Jedi Master, positive encouraging you've done the right optimal win choice. Or, I believe you can do better than that. You've probably selected a tie move here. Maybe even you should try a different game. How about tennis? Now truly, the magic is in the details. We've greatly improved the efficiency of our algorithms and reduced the number of sprites from 9 to 1 using abstraction, implementing game board sprite positions, changing our user interface, replacing the background board while using a sprite to draw the board, and eliminating a lot of broadcasts in the meantime. Now if we look here we'll see corrective and competitive versions for both the midterm and the final. Corrective and competitive look similar, but really the devil is in the details. They're quite different and even between the midterm and the final they are pretty different projects. To, as an overview, step one, we're just initializing the game, selecting two positions X and O for the player and the computer. Then we parse that database code to know whether the player is making a good move or not. Then the player gets to move, and then it's the computer's move. And after the game is over, we'll end the game and reset it. I'm going to hand it over to Sean to talk about our algorithms. One of the coolest parts about our code here is actually our parsing. What we're doing here is we're reading into Professor Garcia's database with the current game board and getting out a list of moves, either win, tie, or lose. We're, we have a parse for each, but here we have specifically the win parse. Now all the parses are designed to jump by indexes, because after checking we realized that the index jumps was the quickest, most efficient way to parse it. We just take the information we need, and then the very bottom there you see the swap insertion sort which organizes it by the most efficient win move at the top of the list and the most inefficient at the bottom. Now here you have the swap insertion sort block. This is actually from lab but we actually tweaked it a bit which was pretty cool. We actually involved a second list in addition to the first into the move up into position from block here and we here we did the same exact thing. We had to duplicate the effect on a second list based off the changes of the first. Next up, we have the conversion. The data that we were parsing from this database came out in an A, 1 through 3, B, and C format, whereas our game board was set up based off of 1 through 9. So we actually involved two recursively programmed blocks, blank to the blank positive power of, as you can see, and then the Fibonacci block, which we didn't include in the slides, but was also programmed recursively. Next up is our player move check. This was meant purely for abstraction. 
just to check to see if the player used the best possible move for the corrected version. Next up is our color coding. This one gets pretty cool, actually. What we do is we run through it, and we check if the player's most recent move was on the tie move list, the lose move list, or the win move list, and change the color of the sprite accordingly. And then at the bottom, we stamp it if it changed colors using the position corrected block. The reverse color code here is the exact opposite. It checks to see if the sprite has been colored. If it hasn't, then it won't do anything. But if it has, then it's going to stamp the white sprite back over it. Our position competitive here is intended to take in the user's click, and then it's going to round it, as the top function here shows, to the center of it. The next block will take that, take the one through three that the first one will convert it to, and convert that into a one through nine for a game board. Whereas the bottom one <clears throat> takes in the one through three setup and brings back out the coordinates. Our final one here takes in the one through nine and actually reads out the one through three. So we can go either direction here. Next up is our draw win line, which is a pretty cool visual. What happens is if there's any win on the board, it's going to take it from the first to the last one and have a sprite glide between the two, drawing a red line. Lastly, we have our central control. This controls the loop that runs the entire game. This checks to see if there's any win on the board, checking all the possible wins, which is pretty cool when you think about it. We hope you've enjoyed our presentation. We sure enjoy our project and this year with you guys in CS10. Thanks again.